Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. Well, Carl Moses, CEO of the Caribbean Climate Smart Accelerator, is in charge of a huge swath of the map and a huge swath of the globe called the Caribbean Basin. And it's an area that has great diversity but also tremendous natural resources for the production of renewable energy. And to have this motto uh, through the Climate Smart Accelerator is 90% renewable energy for all. So uh, looking at that across all these different countries, Raquel, how does that really uh, help you as far as moving forward in the 21st century to meet the guidelines for the Paris Accord, but also to really make most of these countries energy independent yeah so at the moment when you look at the caribbean we have uh the average of re renewable energy usage across the 27 countries that we work with is 17 percent and that means that there's a long way for us to go but it also means that there's a tremendous opportunity in getting to 90 percent at the moment based on the commitments that countries have made today where countries have aspired towards an average of 57 percent um, but you have countries like Costa Rica that are at 100% already, and they can run for 300 days on renewable energy. And that mm. the independence that that represents that you just mentioned is so absolutely tremendous. And we want to see more countries get there. We know that it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be cheap, but mm -hmm. it's certainly something that they can work towards if we work together. When you look at the region, we have such diversity in terms of the types of renewable energy that we can use. We can use wind, we can use solar, we can use mm -hmm. geothermal, we can use wave, we can use you know, hydro. So, so there's so much that we can do, but each country has to figure out its ideal mix to be able to put together a portfolio to determine how it will deliver its energy independence. Mm -hmm. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Looking at some of the different projects that you have, tell us about the ones that are going on now and uh, maybe even some that are aspirational. So two of the most exciting projects that we have within our portfolio is the uh, solar assembly project, as well as the Caribbean Blended Financial Fund for Resilience. And those two are two of the, the, the most exciting ones that I'd love to share with you. The solar assembly project, as you can see um, in, in, the, in the image below, you're seeing the implementation of solar, which is, the, the biggest component of our renewable energy in the region at the moment. But we import those panels and then we implement them. What we want to do is to move up the food chain where we are manufacturing or assembling those, those raw materials into those panels so that we're participating in the economic opportunity of our energy independence. And that is certainly something that we want to see happen. And the other project is to bring funding to bear to make sure that we get more implementation of projects across the region so that projects that don't have enough resilience built into them have the opportunity to access this $100 million fund that we're building mm -hmm. to be able to deliver more solar projects across the region. Yeah, looking at this uh, too, is you're uh, providing skill training that probably was not there before. Uh, you're sourcing this uh, from within the local communities. And I think this is absolutely fantastic. But it takes leadership that allows us to move forward. So is 90% doable based on what you see as far as the leadership is concerned? 
uh, because the citizens seem that they really have bought into this idea and it's benefiting them as far as uh, jobs and training. You know, what a perfect photograph to bring up as we're talking about whether or not it's doable. It is absolutely doable, but it's only doable if we have collaboration. And this photo represents the collaboration towards that Caribbean blended financial uh, for blended finance for resilience fund you have people representing usaid the caribbean development bank the university of the west indies the government of barbados me at the caribbean climate smart accelerator the um IRENA, which is the international renewable energy agency uh the government of saint lucia um you know, as well as other organizations. So if we work together and we have international support, 90% renewable energy is absolutely doable. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, things like this fund that we're building will help to make it financially accessible for the region, mm -hmm. because I think there's no lack of desire to make this, uh, to create this, this revised future. It is the lack of capacity and the lack of financial capacity, especially mm -hmm. to make it happen. And I think the whole thing about the Climate Smart Accelerator is that you're actually pushing for capacity. And this is something that I think is is gone now beyond aspirational. I mean, you're really demanding it. We need to do this across, you know, all these different countries. And I think that's the uh, the energy and the strength of doing this, no pun intended at all, is that you're really pushing this forward. Uh, tell us what we're seeing here and why is this so important? again, as we move towards this 90% renewable energy. So I think this is uh, me speaking at an international conference and, and that's a lot of, of what we do. It's, it's, you know, a big part of what we do is the advocacy to make sure that we get countries on board, that countries buy into uh, this revised uh, target that we want to work towards. But it's making sure that they understand, listen, we're not asking you to go it alone. What we want you to be able to do is to understand that if we agree to new targets and new amplified targets, that we will work with you to find the funding to bring to bear on getting these projects implemented. So what we want to change working on the international stage and speaking at these events is to get countries to think about it differently and then we help solve the problem of how, if they are willing to say yes to the overall objective. Now looking at uh, the various countries, what are they contributing into this as far as making this 90% uh, doable and doing it now instead of waiting, you know, the next decades as we go towards 2050. Part of what we, we ask them to contribute is uh, the projects that they have. So they can tell us, listen, our aspiration is 75%, 80%, 90%, 100%. -hmm. And then we say, okay, what are the projects that you currently have that help you to get there? And how far do those projects help you to get there? And we have a gap analysis that we've done that says, okay, a country is at 10%, they aspire towards 50%, uh, but they have projects that help them get to 30%. So how do we close that gap between between what they already have defined and what they have not defined. And how can we get the private sector involved? How can we get a uh, collaboration across countries? How can we get some innovative solutions? Uh, as as we, we talked about wave, wave energy, you know, how do we get new innovative solutions in under the umbrella to be able to deliver and close that gap? You know, when you see this picture, there's solar, but you're also seeing, you know, a, a, a palm tree. And the, the interesting is, it's that there's more than one way to deliver the renewable energy target that we want to get to. And it's not all about solar, despite solar being the most mature. We want to look at all kinds of different aspects of our energy mix. And we're also willing to think about it in terms of developing new types of renewable energy. I think that there's so much that's yet to be discovered. When we look at uh, I think it was Morgan, uh, I, I won't quote the source because I'm not sure, but there is $80 trillion that needs to be spent just to deliver on what we've already co committed to. Mm -hmm. So if we that's can be a money. part, that's real money. Mm -hmm. So if we can be a part of that solution in coming up with new types of new mechanisms to be able to deliver those new solutions, 
like wind, you know, wind is such a phenomenal resource, especially when you talk about uh, certain islands like the, the, the Dutch islands have, have a tremendous opportunity for, for wind energy, but they also have great waste to energy opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what we want is countries to contribute in thinking about things differently, approaching it differently, and looking to the economic opportunity of the energy independence as a chance to have this audacious goal, but also in a, as an opportunity to meet the audacious goal. And the whole thing about being 90% uh, uh, energy independent is to not to be importing, uh, you know, fossil fuels, dirty diesel, and uh, natural, even natural gas, but producing your own. Because when you look at these blue waters right in front of us, and that's why I've left this photograph up, uh, there's so much power in the sea, the water that surrounds most of these countries. Uh, it's just incredible the amount of uh, energy. And with the uh, University of the West Indies and, you know, its engineering department, uh, you have some very smart people throughout all these different countries uh, that can really get uh, into this. Well, what are some of the challenges that you're facing? We're seeing some of the solutions here. I think this is a very clever one. Uh, but what's some of the challenges that you're actually facing, as well as uh, the way you're being uh, innovative with the solutions? Yeah, so, you know, the, 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 this um, solarized bus shelter and using this shelter as a way to generate power is a fantastic new solution. But some of the challenges that we're facing is the ability to afford things like this, but also the vision to be able to see this as a solution. Mm -hmm. So we're working with countries to be able to understand what is it that they, they want to achieve and how can we get them to up the ante and how can we get them to take that chance? The other challenge that we face is that we tend to operate in political cycles and that's not useful for long-term development. So we need to have um, small manageable projects like this, where it's just a bus shelter that's going to contribute to the overall energy uh, contribution. But we also need policy changes that are long term policy changes that can help countries to make the kinds of uh, make the kinds of policies to allow, you know, independent solar generation to allow feed into the grid to allow people to come up with new solutions to allow electric vehicles to build in the infrastructure for electric vehicles for example to allow the private sector to get involved and to create economic opportunities around some of these new solutions and to create incentives as well as disincentives mm -hmm. to uh, traditional transportation because if we're going to create a new renewable energy objective we're going to have to use uh, renewable you know vehicles that operate on renewable energy. We have to make the utilities see the value in the changes that are taking place. It's easy to stay in your comfort zone and operate the way that you've already operated because you're 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 not taking chances. But who wouldn't want to tr to travel in in a vehicle that looks like this? It's <laughs> it's fun and it's funky and it's you know, it's electric, but it also is very Caribbean. It's colorful oh, and it's and it's air. just it's, absolutely fantastic. But this is also very Caribbean. We're going to go out on this image right here. Uh, what are the drivers for the countries to really want to move forward? We only have about 40 seconds to do this. Well, uh, the drivers for them to move towards this 90 percent goal. I think it, it is the energy independence. So by doing utility scale projects like this one, we are able to get there more quickly. But it's going to take a contribution of big projects as well as small projects to be able to pull it all together and to get there. And that's what we need agreement on. Yeah, and, and I, I like the image of this and that's why I'm going out on this because you have these uh, people walking together, working on this huge project and you say small projects as well, but they're walking as they're going into the future. And I think this is really what the uh, Caribbean Climate Smart Accelerator is all about. Thank you for being with us, Raquel Moses, the Climate uh, Summit Accelerator for the Caribbean, 90% renewable energy for all as we create the Emerald Planet.